Hey, how's it going? Today I'm talking about strengthening for meniscus problems. This is Running to the Castle, a podcast for injury-prone run Disney runners on a journey to running magical miles. Join me, Dr. Allie, as I share the secrets I've gathered as a runner, doctor of physical therapy, and coach. You'll learn the exact ways I get my clients to the castle strong without feeling broken or held together with KT tape as they cross the finish line. Okay, as you know, I have a background in physical therapy. I have been a physical therapist since 2012. What you may not know is my specialty is actually knee arthritis and meniscus problems. I also throw in there IT band problems, runner's knee, basically knees in general, because going through everything with knee arthritis and meniscus problems, I have picked up a lot and have seen many patients and clients with IT band problems and runner's knee. But I got started with knee arthritis because when I was going through physical therapy school, we have to go through clinical rotations and you were supposed to do a different type of rotation each time. You're supposed to do like pediatrics or neuro, orthopedics. You had to do one in an acute care hospital and one in a subacute rehab facility or long term rehab facility. And just by the way luck would have it, I was always on the knee replacement floor. So when I first, when my first rotation happened, it was outpatient orthopedics and they did a lot of knee surgery. So I saw a lot of ACL surgeries, a lateral, a lot of lateral knee releases. I saw a lot of knee replacements. I saw a lot of um, meniscectomies and meniscus repairs. And that was great. I was like, okay, this is great. I got a lot with orthopedics. Then on my next rotation, I went to an acute care, re, uh, excuse me, an acute care hospital, and I was on the joint replacement floor, and I was responsible for teaching the pre-class, the before surgery class, on what to expect. So I learned a lot about knee replacement surgery. I also was responsible for helping the people get as strong as possible before they had the knee replacement surgery. So saw a lot of people with a lot of painful arthritis. And then of course saw the people after they had the surgery. And then my third rotation, I was in a subacute rehab and I was supposed to be on the neuro floor. But guess what? I was on the joint replacement floor again. So I got to see joint replacements for the two weeks after they had surgery while they were in the hospital because they couldn't, while they were in the rehab facility because they couldn't go home yet. They either lived alone or they just didn't feel comfortable. Many reasons. And then the last rotation, it was all orthopedics and it was actually in a primarily cash-based physical therapy clinic in San Diego. And we just, we saw a lot of different kinds of surgeries or after people had surgery or even years after people had surgery. So that that's a long time. Um, that's, sorry, that's a little bit of a tangent, but I wanted, somebody asked me that the other day. So I wanted to share that little bit of information. Anyway, so today we are strengthening for meniscus problems. There are a few things to be mindful of, and I should say that this is mainly going to be talking about glute strength, and that's because glute strength is just so important for the knees. I have another podcast episode about why glute strength is so important for the knees, so go ahead to the show notes. I'll link it in there. You can listen to that, but the long and short of it is that your hips pre-position where your knees are in space and your glutes are your biggest hip muscles. So that's a little bit of a spoiler, but I go into great detail in that podcast episode. So go back and listen to that one. So when you're strengthening your glutes to support your knees for your meniscus problems, a couple of things come to mind at first. First, we need to know what kind of meniscus problem do you have? Do you have a degenerative meniscus tear or do you have a new acute meniscus tear from an accident? Like, did you step, plant, and twist, and now you have like a bucket handle tear that's getting in the way? Or is it 
something that's been going on and on and on and on for years. And it's it's wear and tear of that meniscus because they'll be just slightly differently, slightly different in the way you need to be careful about moving. And you may not even know because maybe you had knee problems for a while and then now all of a sudden it's killing you and your knee really hurts but you don't know if like something new has happened. So it's okay if you don't know the difference. One thing you can do is you can try doing the thing. And if if you're like, oh, hmm, Dr. Ali talked about that. I wonder if this is what I have. So that keep keep that in mind. So a couple of things to be mindful of. So with meniscus problems, be mindful of deep bending. Be mindful of a plant and twist and be mindful of deep bending during a flare, especially. So I, so I say be mindful because nothing is an absolute no, don't do. If anybody's telling you absolutely no, never do this, run far, far away from them because there's always a, a caveat. There's always a question mark. There's always more to it. So be mindful of deep bending. The reason for that is because the majority, most meniscus tears happen at a certain spot in your meniscus that when you deep bend, you roll over that spot. And so you're more likely to flare it up or get it caught where it catches and you can't straighten your leg out again until you loosen up and release that lock position, which is something I've had to do with my clients in person before. Now I just talk them through it, talk a family member through it. It's, it's I don't want to say it's super easy, but it, it can be talked through. So if you do deep bend and you do get it locked, it's not the end of the world. You, we can release it. I actually had to Um, release it on a friend of mine. She had deep, she had bent down, I think to get something underneath her bed. I happened to be there and she was looking for something, picking something up, did a deep bend, and then she couldn't get up. Her knee, you know, it rolled over that meniscus. She had an old ACL, old meniscus problem that just, I don't know if she ended up re-tearing the meniscus or if it never fully got taken care of from earlier on because this that happened when she was a teenager and this was years and years later. Anyway, we did the little maneuver that I do and she's like, oh my God, I've never had it released so quickly. So don't worry, it can be released. But be mindful of deep bending. Be mindful of plant and twist. So that's how meniscus injuries happen. It's a plant and a twist. So You know, you're running down the street and there is a curb. And so you step off the curb. And as you're stepping off the curb, you're watching for cars. You hear a car start coming. And so as you're going down, that foot's hitting the ground and you turn to look behind you to look for that car. That's a plant and twist. If it's forceful enough, you can tweak or tear your meniscus. So when you are exercising, you want to be mindful of planting and twisting. Now, if you're very conscientious about it and you are focused in on it, you can absolutely plant, no problem. I still don't recommend plant and twist. But the problem is when you're not focusing on how your body is planting, then that's where the accidental twist comes into play. So dynamic movements while you're in a pain flare or, you know, not really paying attention, those can be really painful because you can twist and flare up your meniscus injury. And then I already talked about being mindful of deep bending, especially when you're already in a flare. Deep bending is not going to improve a flare. It is going to make it worse. That one is like 98% of the time, that's what happened. So if you aren't in a flare, be mindful of deep bending. If you are in a flare, really be mindful of deep bending. Okay, so those are the three things to be mindful of deep bending. So things that you are likely going to be very mindful and be careful with are going to be squats, sumo squats, deep squats, 
lunges, uh, dynamic lunges where you're switching position or walking, walking lunges, things like that, you, you need to be very careful of. So if you want to be avoiding those, which some people will want to avoid them, some people won't. You just need to be really mindful of it. You want to make sure that you are activating your glutes and working your glutes in all directions that your glutes primarily work. So that's typically extension, abduction, so backward and lateral movements, and then some rotation, some external rotation. So you see people doing clamshell exercises. That works the glutes as well. It's it's not the primary focus, but I'd say it's a secondary. But pretty much all directions that your hips go, your glutes pay, play some kind of part in. But the major ones are that extension and lateral movement. So you want to activate your glutes, so make sure that they're engaging. You want to make sure that they're stabilizing and keeping everything steady. And then you want to make sure that you're strengthening them by doing enough repetition, having enough resistance or weight. And you want to make sure you're doing backward, lateral, and some rotational movements to activate and work those glutes in all directions that they do so that they can really support your knee. And if you want to see what all of that looks like, I'm running a free workshop September 25th. Build your glutes without squats and lunges. It's for run Disney runners who have knee problems. So go to the show notes to register for that. And I'm going to walk you through exactly how to build your own workout so that you don't aggravate your knees anymore and they can feel better and you can have stronger glutes. As always, thanks so much for listening. That's all for now. Talk to you soon.